If you are a runner, seasoned runner, high rocker, just interested in science and how science can improve your fitness, this is definitely one for you. It's going down. I just have my lactate threshold and VO2 max tested. More on what those two mean later in the video. There were two tests. The lactate threshold test aims to identify the point at which the body shifts from aerobic energy production to anaerobic metabolism. There's a bit of a misconception around lactic acid. Lactic acid is actually a fuel source, but it's quite tricky for your body to turn that back into fuel. Lactic acid is produced during anaerobic metabolism through glycolysis, where glucose is broken down into pyruvate, which is then converted to lactate in the absence of sufficient oxygen. This process is vital for ATP production during intense exercise. Lactate serves as a significant fuel source and through gluconeogenesis in the liver, it can be converted back to glucose. So it's not favorable, but it is a fuel source. The VO2 max test is designed to measure the maximum amount of oxygen an athlete can utilize during intense or maximal exercise. To start with, we just gathered some basic metrics. Um, we needed my resting lactic measurements, my resting heart rate, my height, and my blood lactate reading was two, uh, which is favorable, but um, yeah, at least usually around one. They also measured my hemoglobin. My hemoglobin levels were high, which is good, um, which shows like good oxygen carrying potential. And um, they did warn that as training intensifies, you can basically damage your small capillaries and then your hemoglobin levels become, become lower. So that's something to watch. Uh, my resting heart rate in the lab was 56. First up, the test was lactate threshold. So the basic premise of this was that you start at a warm up pace, a very easy pace, and then increment. So you run for three minutes, break for 30 seconds. The physician takes a blood lactate reading from your ear, puts that in a vial, asks you for your RPE, which is your rate of perceived exertion. They use the scale of six to 20. Uh, which is basically reflective of heart rate, but it was basically like 200 beats per minute being around the maximum. And so you basically just sort of added, added a zero. We set off at 10 kilometers an hour and the plan was to run for three minutes, have that 30 second uh, reading that I just mentioned, and then go again, run for three minutes, take lactate reading, record RPE, go again. So I went from 10 kilometers an hour, which is roughly six minutes per, per kilometer. Did that for three minutes. So went to 11 kilometers an hour, took a reading, 12, 13, 14, 15, and 16 kilometers an hour finished there, which is approximately my 5K pace, around 346 per kilometer. And basically the intention here is to establish where your you transition from using fat into glucose and also then where your blood lactate levels are, what paces do they increase and at what rate do they increase. And then from that you can find your lactate threshold and your lactate turn point. Once you have done the lactate threshold test and you establish these, these, these critical markers, so I didn't know at this stage what the results of that were, I then had to do a VO2 max test. Now the VO2 max test is pretty brutal. There's two ways you can do it. You can basically run on a flat, I say flat, the incline was one, but run on a treadmill flat and go faster and faster and faster and faster until you can't run anymore. And or you can do a ramp test where you pick your lactate threshold speed and just increase the incline over and over and over and over until you can't run anymore. This time I opted for the, the sort of more, I guess more traditional way, which is just to go for speed. I think we started at 10 kilometers an hour again, which is six minutes a K. And then you just, every minute you increase by one kilometer. I mean, it was just all about effort. And obviously I was wearing the mask. So the mask was, 
readings on how much carbon dioxide I was expelling and oxygen I was intaking. And from this you can get the VO2 max. So during the actual test, it's like you start at six minutes a K for one minute, continuously go through to the next one and then just increase, increase, increase until you, your legs just can't carry you anymore. I couldn't safely give any more. So those are the two, the two tests. And basically the reason I did this, I mean, it was a Christmas present from my wife, um, which is a really cool Christmas present actually. And, but the great thing about having this data now is that I know what my heart rate zones are, what my lactate threshold zones are, and what my training zones are in terms of paces. One thing that I realized is that actually that my ranges are a lot closer than I thought. So my easy zone is anything below essentially 170 beats per minute. And I think that must be because I've done a lot of zone two heart rate. And we have to make sure that we recognize it as zone two heart rate, because I'll talk about zone two lactate threshold in, in a minute. Um, but I did a lot of easy zone two stuff, like when I was running ultras and just generally like because of my history of like respiratory problems, I find like getting the, the zone two work in helps a lot. Um, but I think that what that's done is pushed like my sort of fat oxidization and um, easy zone like quite high, but then my actual like threshold zones are like quite close. So basically now I'm doing a lot more steady runs. So I guess you'd call that like tempo, low, low tempo. So for me, that's around, I think, 430 per kilometre. And I think about up to 174 beats per minute. So it's a quite a small, small window to work with, but it's just like, I've been doing a lot more runs at that pace. And it's like, just trying to basically train the mitochondria to get used to working in that zone. And then hopefully that will push, push out the, the, um, the, diff, the distance between your lactate threshold and your lactate turn point. Yeah, so then now I know exactly what my zones are and we can basically use that as a basis to build my running around. So I'm essentially back to working more with heart rate, work more with paces, um, going less off of feel now because I have a really solid scientific foundation to work from. A few points to note. So my watch says that my VO2 max is 56 and I don't usually wear a heart rate monitor so I've always kind of accepted that there's some room for discrepancy there. What actually came out of the test was that my VO2 max was 57.9, so almost 58. So that's two units out or two milligrams per kilo two milliliters per kilogram, I think, out. And so what we have to think about here also is that this is relative VO2 max, not absolute VO2 max. So one of the things that came out of the test was that my absolute VO2 max, so like my total oxygen intake is was five, which actually is considered elite. But because I'm heavy, I was 91, when you extrapolate that down to the relative VO2 max, it yields 57.9. And basically Toby, the physician said, if I get my weight down to about 85 kilograms, then that would yield a sub elite VO2, relative VO2 max reading, which is pretty cool. That happens to also be a weight that I have to target to be able to do horse safari for our honeymoon. So, you know, maybe it's a, maybe it's a, <laughs> Maybe it's a sign. Yo, so if you want to follow along with my weight loss journey, hit join down below. I'm covering daily nutrition, training, the highs and lows, snacks, meals, everything. So yeah, hit join. That's a in really interesting takeaway that actually like my total ox oxygen uptake is in a, is in a very good place. Um, it's, also, it's just like there's a whole bunch of other things at, at play here. And then one of the other important parts to note was that my range between my lactate threshold and my lactate turn point was 
very narrow. So I should be able to expand that area basically between my lactate threshold, which I think was around 434 a kilometer, and my lactate turn point, which is around 415, 416. What was interesting though, is that that lactate turn point is the pace that I ran my last, last high rocks at. It's also the pace that I ran my best half marathons at. So there's clearly something like my body is used to operating it in that in that zone, which is quite interesting. And so if I can somehow if I can push that lactate turn point higher doing these steady runs, then I think that that can only be good things for future performances. So that's really cool. The other thing is that we got readings on like fat oxidation and carbohydrate oxidation, and it seemed that like my fat oxidation was uh, 1.1 at maximum and my glucose oxidation was I think six uh, at maximum and it stayed relatively consistent at that level which was good. It's really interesting having those kind of markers and establishing like where you're utilizing those fuels and where those fuel sources come from. I think one thing I didn't quite account for is how, how high and how reliant on sugar in those upper ends I am and that would explain probably why I bonked really hard at um, High Rocks London. So yeah, so lots of super interesting takeaways from it and like I think it's really cool to do that kind of test and have those metrics and have them scientific and like actual, not guesswork. Like these are taken with blood samples and these are extrapolated from like a physician who's trained specifically in this area. And it gives a really interesting foundation to, um, yeah, to craft like future training programs from. And like I'm doing that now, I'm doing sort of less easy stuff and more steady, um, and really targeting those zones very specifically. And it's very interesting how like, there's sometimes much more narrow, much more definite ranges that you have to target versus like just running as hard as you can or running really easy. It's like, if I can just, if I focus this area specifically, then I'm gonna train those mitochondria. So yeah, super interesting, highly recommend it. Um, if any of you guys have any questions on any of the topics, drop them in the comments. Um, obviously, like this is just my experience. Everyone's physiology is different. So what might work for me might not work for, work for you, but what might work for me might also work for you. And I think it's worth just experimenting, testing stuff out, keeping on pushing, trying new things and enjoying it. So yeah, thanks for taking time to watch and uh, see you on the next one. Peace.